Doctor? The, uh, the long-term impact can be seen, I think, in two ways. One, the potential impact on the detainees in terms of success, in terms of personal risk and injury. And second, what would be, what is there going to be the impact politically on the situation at Guantanamo? You know that the task force came out very strongly condemning force feeding. And this is in keeping and in line with international ethical standards, both of professional treatment of hunger strikers and the ethics of treating hunger strikers. We do not believe that force feeding should be an approach to the hunger strike. If you can imagine being a detainee and using refusal to eat as a form of protest, and then you are forced to eat, forced physically to eat by being strapped into a specially made chair and restrained, having restraints put on your limbs, your arms, your legs, your body, your head so you cannot move, having a tube inserted into your throat that extends into your stomach and you're trying to resist that with the only muscles that are free in your throat. Pain, discomfort, obviously. But in, in addition to that, food is then forced in a liquid form into your stomach. You're kept in the chair for at least two hours, usually more than two hours, to prevent you from vomiting and uh, undermining the force feeding. You can't go to the bathroom during that time. Your dignity is taken away. The World Medical Association and international officials have clearly identified that process as cruel, inhuman, uh, and degrading treatment. And whatever the, given the level of brutality, it could extend to torture. Now, since you're refusing food, that's going to happen to you twice a day, day after day, month and week after week. And for some detainees, it has gone on for years, as much as four years and longer. Now, no question that that has great risk to the detainee. And if the detainee is not treated properly, some damage can occur. And obviously, there's always the risk of death. We worry about this hunger strike. It's not the first, as you all know, at Guantanamo Bay. Perhaps the most dramatic, most focused and extensive were in 2005. And there were two, uh, dealing with conditions of the, the detention camp and beginning to come to grips and part of the detainees with the extended detention, the hope of uh, getting out of Guantanamo Bay. Uh, the first part of that 205 ended uh, because the detainees thought there was going to be application of Geneva Conventions, and they were in discussions. When that didn't happen, they had the second hunger strike, and it was during that hunger strike that the the restraint chairs and the force feeding in restraint chairs was introduced. This now is a hunger strike occurring uh, with very different circumstances. The last hunger strike seemed to have been broken by the use of the force feeding, partly, because the numbers dropped off dramatically during the force feeding. In addition, you have to believe that there was some hope in association with that that the detainees saw in addition to the force feed. This time we're dealing with force feeding and hunger strikers who may have much, much less hope. In fact, the, the reason for the hunger strike is an absence of hope. So we're concerned, first of all, that force feeding is being used. Second, we don't have a lot of transparency about how that's being done. And third, it's very hard to see how, how we're going to have a reasonable outcome here without some sort of intervention. 